Hello, everyone, and welcome to Your Better Health program, coming to you from the RWJ Fitness and Wellness Center here in Hamilton. We are so excited to be back with Alyssa Looning, who is our registered dietitian, and I have to cheat because it's a lot of initials, <laughs> um, board certified specialist in obesity and weight management. And then I always like to add those other initials that you have that are so important to all of us. And it's the C-H-E-F, <laughs> chef, um, that really brings my buddy over here all together and makes us so happy when she's cooking for us and teaching us how to really eat healthily, right? Yeah, you got to have the two. You know, right. if, if you're going to do healthy stuff, you have to know how to taste and make it taste That's good right. That's to awesome. make it a long lifestyle change. So, right. Yeah. So last time we got together, we did breakfast. Right. And we did a savory and a sweet. Mm -hmm. And it was awesome. <laughs> right. As always. Yes. Yes. Tofu scramble, overnight oatmeal, you know, recipes should all be available. That's right. Yeah. We have yeah. those to share. Um, today we're going to talk lunch, right? But yes. not... Not a normal, not I'm going to grab a salad or a sandwich. It's a little different. A little different, yeah. So there are things that hopefully it can be kind of a one-two punch, easy to throw together. I know that growing up, um, very, very often my mom would always do tuna salad. Or, oh, yeah. Yeah, so it's just, it seemed like the easiest thing to right. learn that you drain, drain the can, you mash them, you mix the stuff in, you're done. Right. So I wanted to be able to give you a recipe that's just like that. Mm-hmm but plant-based. Okay, so <laughs> a plant-based non-tuna salad. Right. Okay, a, good. A chickpea salad. All right, I'm ready. All right, so first we're gonna do the, the laborious part, and that's gonna be two mashed chickpeas. Okay, I'm in. <laughs> so um, I only got regular chickpeas from the store, they're not low sodium, so what I'm gonna do is take them over to the sink and give them a nice shower first. You want me first. to do that? Sure. And you can teach yeah. them. Okay. Nice. All right, so while those are rinsing, I'm gonna take about half of this small onion. And because this is gonna be something that we eat without cooking, I'm gonna put on some gloves so that it's all serve safe standard. All right. So, Melissa, do you, I'm so sorry. Yeah. Do you have to dry these, or are they okay a little wet? They're okay a little wet. Yep, okay. you just kind of just swoosh until all the bubbles come off. So for the onions, I always cut off that front half, that front papery part first, flip it over, do it through the middle, and then I just go for it, pull the skin off. So I may not be able to hear you, but I want to know who did this after last week's yeah. lesson, uh, because I know I tried. I hope you were a little more successful than me. I was okay, but not... It takes a lot Not of as practice. Not talented as you, for sure. It takes a lot of practice. Okay. And a lot of, you know, big, you know, chefs going over your shoulder like, <laughs> <laughs> So go uh, with your knife, go along the lines of the onion here. And you can make it to the size that you'd like. I know that for chicken salad or tuna salad, I kind of like them minced. So I'm going to mm. make them a little bit smaller than usual. And after you do the top slices, take your hand and just do a nice... Slice through the middle. That was the part I forgot. Oh. <laughs> there you go. That's why I didn't do it properly. Well, that, that's why it takes practice. Right. Yeah. And then from right to left, you just, it just comes off, <laughs> comes off the bone, <laughs> so, to, <laughs> so to speak. It just uh, comes down and you get these nice little pieces that aren't too spicy. Um, you know, if you, this is yellow onion. I like to use a lot of sweet onions mm -hmm. too. Um, red onion would be very, very pretty. Um, mm. So I think whatever you have on hand uh, would, be, would be good for this. All right, so I have my onion diced up. We have our chickpeas. Okay. Now we have the mash. Okay, this is where the work comes in. Yes. <laughs> so I'm going to move this over to give you space. Okay, because I'm mashing. <laughs> I got the muscles here. Okay. Yes. I'm going for it. All right. So just like you would with any other kind of cold salad, we got some chickpeas here, the rinsed off, and it takes a little bit more oomph than you, oh, shoot. Than you think. <laughs> yeah. This might be a you thing, Alyssa. <laughs> <laughs> you just you just get out a lot of aggression, you know, just whatever you got in there. So I think I'd maybe use 
a masher. Oh yeah. Because, yeah. you know, I have such a professional kitchen. If you, have a, <laughs> if you have a potato masher, that would be absolutely perfect. They actually do make something called a bean masher. They do? Yeah, yeah. It looks like a little star, and then it has a stick, and you... Oh, that yeah. would probably be even faster, Yeah, right? yeah. Or even faster than that would be to grab a little food processor. Oh, okay. Yeah. And just put them in there, pulse it for a few seconds. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, because I'm thinking we're not eating this today. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it, it's just for show with this one. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for mashing. It's gonna, <laughs> I'll just keep going over here. Just keep on. It took me a long time to actually make the, you know, to make it. Um, it did? Yeah. It's not fast. But you know what? Actually, I read a tip that if you, like, cook them a little bit first... Um, then they'll be much easier to smush, and that makes a lot of sense. That does. Yes. So, so. I'm going to suggest the food <laughs> processor or the star, star, what is it, masher, because I like quick and easy. Yeah. <laughs> so definitely, if you have a little food processor, totally perfect Absolutely. and fine. And otherwise, it's just some occupational therapy, you know. You yeah. Just, so like most cold salads, too, I like to put in some celery. Okay. You know, give it that extra crunch. And I usually like to cut it into three slices. This is, there's no hard or fast rule on this. This okay. is just how I found it to make it go fast. And just slice it down the middle, slice down the middle, and slice down the middle. So okay. then you end up having these flat little pieces. Okay. And then you, just like the onion, you can run your knife right to left. Sometimes I think we need to do um, a cutting class. Yeah. I know you do those. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, we'll have to try that out, too. Mm -hmm. Yes. I have a cutting class. It was last year. Right, yeah, I remember. Yeah, yeah, we're going to make a fresh one. Okay, we'll do a new one. All right. So, All right, beautiful job. This. Thank you. Yes, yes, everyone. <laughs> Excellent. All right, Joyce, just like a typical salad. And you okay. know what? You could keep them whole, too. No one, no one ever said that they had to be all mushed and pureed just okay. as much. Yeah, um, sometimes it's nice with a little texture in it because then you're, no, you're, you know you're eating. You know you're chewing, eating. right? You're chewing yes. a little more. And the longer you chew, really the more satiated you end up feeling because you That's spend a, a longer trick. time breaking things down. Um, so one controversial ingredient I like to put in my tuna salad is a uh, pickle, dill pickle relish. Have you had that before? I do not care for pickles in my tuna salad. Right. But I'm going to respect you. You're the chef. You <laughs> so go for it. It is completely negotiable. Uh, it's completely optional. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, if you were to get the pickles, I got just these uh, kosher dill ones. I get them in the refrigerated section at Shoprite or at the local grocery store. Um, just because the ones in the in the jar sometimes are really, really, really salty mm. and green and yeah. neon colored, and you know <laughs> they they're they're good and they have a time and a place. But for like deli salad like this, right. I really like the taste of the dill pickle. Okay. So I just sliced it into little planks and then planks or if you have dill pickle relish you can use oh, that too that, yeah another quick yeah easy. if i found that at the store i definitely would have gotten that for this for this uh you know program today because this is another step. <laughs> yeah, I like the quick and easy. Yeah, the quick and easy. I'm buy the relish get if the, I ever Yeah, get do the it. relish. Get the, there's, um, you know, some people like sweet pickled relish. Um, I'm, I'm just always a big fan of dill. Okay. So nice little chopped up pieces. And then you have one left over for the side of your plate. Oh, very nice. All right. So I'm going to put this in here. Okay. I'm going to save this guy for decoration. Cute. All right. So because it's about all the senses, right? The seeing, the smelling. Yes, the... You have to make it look like something you want right. to eat. You know, you when you just throw stuff together, it can be really easy to go. Uh, all right, this is my healthy diet. Yeah. I, I guess this is okay, and not be enthused about it. Right. And when you're not enthused about it. It, Does, it doesn't stick. Right. Yeah. Yeah, we want it to be all of those things. Right. You want to look at it and go, wow. <laughs> I'll tell so, you, if you could smell this kitchen right now, it smells delicious in here. Melissa's been in here for a couple hours now. And, 
It does smell good. Oh, just having a good time. <laughs> I know. All right. So what's the next ingredient that you usually would put in a salad like this? I put mayonnaise. I know that's not going to pass the, the thing here, though. Right. So mayonnaise... <laughs> A lot of a lot of oil, oil. Um, and egg yolks. So two things that you know, in trying to increase the more plant-based foods in your diet, there are some other alternatives that are pretty creamy that can be used instead of mayo. Um, so why don't we want to use mayo again? Well, in terms of looking at saturated fat, um, which is the type of fat that's been shown to increase your bad or your LDL cholesterol, mm -hmm. um, you typically that might come from something like, um, like hydrogenated oils, mm. partially hydrogenated oils, um, and things like oils that are solid at room temperature. So that's always the base of mayo, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. They sometimes make, um, Olive oil mayo, they make safflower oil mayo. Are those better? They're a little bit better, yeah. They have a different profile of, of types of fats, so it's not all saturated. Okay. It, some of it might be monounsaturated, which is kind of the good kind, and some of it might be something called polysaturated, which neither, neither best nor worse. Okay, kind yeah. of in the middle? In the middle, yeah. Okay, so every little thing we can do will, right. will like, help, oh, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I used to use safflower mayonnaise all the time uh, growing up because <laughs> of, oh. <laughs> of my mom. <laughs> she was all about it. So we used safflower mayonnaise and, you know, just to make things a little bit more, more make me live a little bit more like on this planet than <laughs> in a health food store. So the alternative is a sneak... Sneak secret recipe ingredient is hummus. Hummus. Who thought? Always my secret ingredient, almost always, because it's already s really smooth. Right. It's all been like blended. Great texture. It's got great texture. And I'm just using the plain kind. I'm not getting any flavor. Um, if I wanted to use garlic, that would be pretty mm, good. That um, would be good. Yeah, but I, I definitely stick to the plain. I'm going to put about two tablespoons in there and then... What else might you usually put in it? I would put salt. Salt? We're going to put in a flavor blast. Okay. <laughs> oh. Dijon. Dijon. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yes. So this, yeah, a lot of people use that in their potato salad, exactly, right? Exactly. Okay. Yeah, so you still get this, you know, salad-y taste that you're okay. looking for when you do this recipe. So I was putting in about two tablespoons of the hummus and then two teaspoons of the mustard. Okay, so I'm wearing it. Oh, we forgot to, we have aprons now. <laughs> I did I forget the me. aprons. Next time. Next time you'll see some really yes. cool aprons. All right, so I got the mustard in there for saltiness. I have the mayonnaise in there for creaminess. All comes together with our good friends onion and celery, just like, just like you would normally. If you wanted to do like fancier uh, tuna, Chickpea salads, you could do things like pecans, hot peppers, mm. uh, walnuts, cranberries, you know. Okay, any, so you can really... You can customize it. Yeah. This is, this is blank slate stuff. Okay. Especially without the pickle. <laughs> That's what I'm like. I can try it with the pickle. I may have discovered a new like. All right, yes, yeah. yes. Excellent. So one thing after this is done, you want it to sit in the fridge for at least 30 minutes before you okay. go for it uh, because you do want all those flavors to come together. Mm. Um, before I do put it in the refrigerator, I am going to just give it some pepper as well. And when, when, we're, when we take it out before we serve it, um, we'll just see how it tastes. And if it needs a little bit of salt, then we can sprinkle okay. a little bit on there, but it might not because of all the, you know, the mustard and the hummus that's already in there. All right. Looks yummy. So. Tastes yummy too. I bet it does. Yeah, really good. I love the pickle. <laughs> <laughs> Gives it a little extra spice. It's a good way to get um, more beans in your diet too. Sure. Sometimes it can be hard to figure out where to put them. I know I've worked with patients who all be like, yeah, eat more beans. And they're like, how? Is that out of the can? Right. Like, how do I do that? So doing something like a, pe like a bean salad can be a really easy way to get it in. So got a little oil here. So the audience might wonder why we're doing this. Why do we care what people are eating? Oh, I mean, in terms of wanting to improve 
you know, the, it's the quality of life. You know, it's not about um, how long we live, but it's the quality of the years that we do live. And one thing that can make our lives very difficult and hard to manage and as we go through life is chronic disease. So things like congestive heart failure, things like diabetes, um, and those kinds of conditions, even high blood pressure can get, be a little bit of a curveball later right. in life when you want to go, you know, enjoy what's what there is to offer. So the sooner you are, implement these healthier right. options, I like to think the longer you have to 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 do to that. To enjoy the the exam. Uh, the yeah. The, ha the healthy life that you have. Right. Yeah. So if I because mean, lots of people they'll all they'll argue and they'll say. That's okay. I'll just eat the mayonnaise. Like you know, I'm gonna die tomorrow, whatever. But you know, you really take a hard look at it. And if you want to use food to optimize your health and to optimize your strength, definitely go for some of these healthier alternatives because yeah. you're getting more fiber, you're getting more protein, and you're getting a lot less of those uh, saturated fats and processed oils. And that's really what food is for, isn't it? For fueling, yes. Fueling <laughs> and the tasting and having it be great yes. part is an added bonus, right? Yes. I used to say, if you go to a diner and you eat something, we talked about this last time, um, <laughs> if you go to a diner and you get eggs and you walk out and you have a stomach ache, not good. Your meal didn't do what it was supposed to do. The meal's supposed to get you going. So right. scratch that off. Find something else that works for you until it makes sense. And I think the other part of that is because we're part of RWJ University Hospital Hamilton, um, we're well aware how these um, changes and the things that you teach us can really help improve everything. Oh, we yeah. We see it on a daily basis. Even right? even right in the hospital. You know, Absolutely. That, there might be a patient who has uh, extremely high sodium levels, um, or there might be somebody who's just having um, a difficult time managing their blood sugar, but once mm -hmm. they get kind of prescribed the correct diet, things can start to fall into place. Not immediately. Right. That's the thing. It's not it's medicine. Commitment. Yeah, it's not medicine. Right. So it always takes a little bit longer to, you know, get into effect. But it makes a huge difference in the long term. And I like to think in the long term. I do too. Yes. Okay, so I'm excited. What's our next recipe? All right, next recipe is we're going to do some taco and walnut. Uh, we're going to do some uh, walnut and lentil taco filling. That is Awesome. Yeah, we're going to make the filling, but we're going to use some nice, beautiful lettuce cups to oh, eat nice. them with. Yeah, okay. I love lettuce cups. Yes, yes. So if, if it's, it could be bib lettuce, it could be Boston lettuce. There's a, all these different names for different kinds. I think that the old trusty right. romaine. Romaine lettuce. <laughs> always there, always a good price. And um, so to make the filling, I basically, has a, has a couple more steps than the other recipe. I'm going to ask you to help with this one, too. Be happy to. <laughs> so I kind of want to make like a spice mixture and roast the walnuts first. Okay. Because that's going to give them a real depth of flavor. Mm. And then that's, you know, you could get that nice smell. Right. Um, so I'm going to take in just about a tablespoon of, I have just regular olive oil. Okay. And secret ingredient... This is just a uh, low sodium chili seasoning. Oh, great. Yes. I would have chosen low sodium taco seasoning had it had I seen that at Aldi, but this is what I saw. Chili, taco seasoning, fajita seasoning, whatever all in that same. ballpark, they're all going to have cumin, chili powder, black pepper, kind of those things okay. that we want. So, boop, nice little shortcut there. Now I have this bag for other things. And then I always just like to put a little bit extra cumin. Mm, that smells good. <laughs> because of just the aroma that it has. Okay. It's super nice. And I mean, I've had people tell me, and I haven't looked this up myself, but that there's been a lot of research on cumin and helping to improve blood sugar levels. So we're gonna have to ask Dr. Ali that. Yeah, yeah. Because you know, uh, we work closely with her on uh, all of those things. Getting the truth. Right, the <laughs> yeah. truth. Factor yeah. fiction. Yeah, somebody said, oh, I put um, cumin on my yogurt. And I remember being like, 
Why? Yeah, that doesn't sound so good. <laughs> we have to find out. So to the mixture that we made here, we're just going to add a cup of walnuts. Okay. They're chopped? They're already chopped. Yeah, I get them from the baking section of the supermarket. Okay. It's, again, one less task. Yeah. And it's already in nice little pieces that it's going to mix with the lentils so it's kind of a better, not substitute for ground beef, but something that kind of will remind you kind of, of it. Kind of meaty when you kind chew it, right? Meaty, yes. The yeah. walnuts, they get meaty. Um, and I mean, as far as protein content goes, you're doing pretty good on the plant-based stuff. Okay. Um, and also with walnuts, you get omega-3s. Oh, that's the, awesome. The that's the a bonus. The heart healthy, yes, the heart yes. healthy acids. So um, on that, we're just going to grab a tray. I have here all my stuff and lay them out kind of just, yeah, perfect. And spread them out. So. Yeah. Okay. And so I have the oven on at 400 degrees. Okay. And I'm going to just put them in there for about five minutes. Okay. And in five minutes. They're going to. You're yeah, going to smell it. The room is going to. The room gonna, is going to hmm. smell. And I would say you could do this skipping this step, but it's so good <laughs> if you do. <laughs> then we don't want to skip it. Yeah. So we love doing this, and I, it's always a pleasure for me to work with you because I don't do a lot of cooking classes. I only get to do them with you, and I love it. Well, you know, I think that it's, uh, like we said, if, you, if you're going to suggest healthy lifestyle changes, right. you have to have the evidence that goes along with it. You can't just be all talk. You have to be action. You Absolutely. Show, yeah, yeah. So got to practice what we preach here. All right. Um, the next step in this taco recipe is to almost like you would with ground beef, start to build up an onion base. Right. So this is optional. You don't have to do this step again, okay. but since it's a cooking program, we're on it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to pull the skin off again without too much fuss. And if it ever gives you too much fuss, just tear it off. I say that because you could tell I've had a hard time before. <laughs> like, Don't you know when that happens? Yes. Like, ah. All right, so again, I'm going to go down the lines that are already on the onion. And then I'm going to take my palm and my knife and run it to the middle. And I'm not going to cut. Here's another tip. I don't cut all the way through. Okay. I stop once I get to the end of the stem. Okay. So that it's still attached to the stem. So, so much easier to cut, right? Right, so much easier to cut, and it doesn't go all over the place. That's great. So then right to left, you just do your little chunks right off the onion bone. That'll be a new, new thing to say. <laughs> all right. All right. So because we put the oil in our spice nut mixture, right. to kind of follow more of that whole food plant-based diet guidelines, I'm going to suggest that today we cook without oil. Oh, who knew? Can you do that? Yes, of yes, course. yes, yes. All right, so it's actually called steam frying. Okay. Yeah, so what I'm going to do is give you the steam. I'm okay. going to get the, oven, uh, the saucepan on. This is when she makes me cook again. <laughs> That's why you got, you got the good spot here. Yes. So I'm assuming the water is going to go in there first. Yep. Yep, just like you would with oil. Okay. And just kind of let it get nice and warm. I am doing a little bit of cheating in this recipe because I got the big granulated garlic. Yeah, I like that. So, I mean, that's another thing. It's, you know, got those taco seasonings in there, the cumin. Might as well just keep going with the powdered Absolutely. stuff. Absolutely. If you wanted to use powdered uh, onion powder too, that would be fine as okay. well. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right, so that, that's, that takes no time at all to get hot. Okay. So I want to give you the onions. You know what I found at um, Trader Joe's, and I'm sure you already know about it, but the frozen squares of a garlic clove or... No. Oh, come on. No. no. So you have to look. I am, I'm <laughs> Is it hot. already pureed? Yes. Okay. So it's in the frozen section, and they come in little, and I'm pretty sure it's Trader Joe's, but it's um, in a red box. Mm -hmm. And you can buy it either garlic or ginger. Beautiful. And then you just pop them out as you need them. Oh, that's so good. It's so easy. Yeah, and then you always have it in the freezer. Absolutely. That's the and thing. it feels it's... even more fresh. Right? Yeah, it's yeah. Like a I step closer. end up getting some, like, rotten garlic bulbs in I've my... I've had that happen, too. <laughs> All right, so we're... All right, we're steaming. We're steaming. I'm going to throw this guy in there. Okay. 
give you a different spoon, the one I have over here. Okay. This was the one I was meant to, gonna use in the first place. So here we go. Yep. All right. So I'm gonna let them cook down for a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it's gonna take them a little bit, yeah. right? Yeah. So lentils. Yeah. Let's talk lentils. Okay. <laughs> so I know they're in a bag, so that means they're uncooked, right? Right. And with a lot of dried beans, you have to soak them overnight in order for them to cook and to be more digestible. Okay. Um, but the cool thing with lentils is that they're pretty quick, you know, because they're small in size. Okay. Uh, versus a black bean or a kidney bean or a pinto bean. So you don't have to soak so those So you don't have to soak these oh, overnight. that's cool. Yeah. Okay. Um, so with lentils, you can also find them in the can. Yes. But And again, it's a little bit more expensive, but if we're just trying to throw things together, I would get the canned lentils, it e rinse oh, off I'm the sorry. salt. Yeah. Equally as healthy? I would say that it has more, it will have more sodium. Okay. Um, but nutrient content wise, it will have the same amount of iron, okay. the same amount of protein, um, and the, those, t those nutrients in which that you're looking for in and the I beans. And I think I've seen them like with low sodium marked on cans. Yay. Yeah, <laughs> they're listening. Yes, they have to listen, right? Because right. people need to keep doing their thing. So for the lentils, if I don't use the canned ones, I'm gonna use the dry. I usually do uh, one cup okay. of dry. And with lentils, you kinda wanna look them over, make sure there aren't any little rocks in there. Sometimes they say it can happen. I've never had it happen, but it can happen. Okay, we're gonna check still just to dis be sure. Still a disclaimer, check for rocks. Yes, we don't <laughs> wanna feed anyone rocks. Um, and then I just rinse them off. Just okay. to get the, kind of the dust off of them. Okay. You know, they're not salty, but they're, they've been sitting in that bag for who knows how long. <laughs> okay. And then, once they're all done, um, I put them in a pot. With four cups of water. Okay. <laughs> Came up with that number, four okay. cups. Four cups of water to one cup of lentils. Learned that so many times. I've burned okay. so many pans. This is the magic recipe. So if I do the four cups of water, you could use broth too if you want it to add a little bit more Ooh, flavor. a little more flavor. That's a great idea. I would like that probably. Yeah, and even if your family isn't 100% plant-based, you could use chicken broth in something like this. Sure. You're still using you know, the plant-based proteins as your main source. So just doing that. And when the onions get a little bit brown, um, do you need any water? They're a little brown. Uh, all right, we're I'll gonna get- I'll take some water. Okay, standing back. Sounds cool on the cameras, I'm sure. It's good with the microphone. Yeah. <laughs> all right, easy, really easy. Throw my lentils in. And these are like green lentils, um, or green or brown. Um, I think that <laughs> they are titled one or the other because they're so easily often interchangeable. Right. The big difference is that they're not red. Like okay. red lentils are way different. They're the ones who, that are even tinier. All right, and then I just bring it up to a boil and then let it go to a simmer and basically let it cook for probably about 30 to 45 minutes. That's all it takes? Yeah, yeah. That's so it takes awesome. some, it so takes some time. Yeah, lentils are great. It takes some time, but it's not like beans, you know, where you're just right. like over the stove and the, you know, doing that for a long time. This can just be done on the side. Um, if you have a crock pot or something and you oh. do it overnight, that would be a great way to um, make a big batch of lentils ahead of time. Nice, yes. So after it's been cooked, I'm gonna get magic. Okay, magic. All right. So after all, it's still hearts. After it's mm -hmm. all been cooked, um, we want to end up having gray. They don't look too beautiful here, right? <laughs> they don't look beautiful, but I bet they taste great. Exactly. So and <laughs> this is mixed with the nuts already or nope. no? No, nope. okay. this is what we're gonna use for this. Okay. Okay, so um, let's put a this little bit brown. more water. 
in there. And then we'll t put the garlic powder in. I love. Steam frying. Yes. I like steam frying. I yeah. learned something. I love that we work, we have an employer who cares about the community and what we're eating and doing. Yeah. And that we get to do this fun stuff because of that. Yeah. We have a lot of fun uh, in our programs. Okay. So, TV magic again. Okay, so I believe we have the walnuts. Roasted walnuts oh with all gosh. those seasonings. You can smell oh, they're coming out there. So to our onions, let's first add our lentils. So okay. you can just drop all of them in there. It's about a cup okay. of cooked lentils. So do you get more once it's cooked? Looks like a lot. It looks like a lot, yeah. It ends up being enough for like six to eight servings. Okay. Um, so it, it's really easy to make a lot of that you can store for use later in the week um, or even put in the freezer for later that month or in, within the six, six months after it's been made. So it's great because it could be lunch tomorrow too or lunch next week. Yeah, yeah. And it doesn't have to be a taco filling with the lettuce wrap. As you'll see, I got some really cool little tortillas I want to show you too. So we'll put the nuts in there, mix them all together. Okay, I don't want to lose any cumin, right? Right, you want to keep all those spices. <laughs> There's, you know, got, got so those uh, properties that are very helpful for blood sugar levels, but also delicious. Right, because <laughs> it's got to be good. Yes. <laughs> I, I first made this recipe with somebody who I know um, from culinary school who's an executive chef. And I was like, let's just throw walnuts in it. He said, no. Oh, no. <laughs> it was him. He's like, no, we have to put, he was like, oil. And I was like, oh, oil. He's like, Let, let's put oil in it. And I, I was very cautious to do it. But when I tasted it, I was like, oh, gosh. <laughs> he, was right. he was right. That was the, that was the way to go. Oil. A little bit of oil to get that flavor. And also, oil technically helps you to more, uh, absorb fat-soluble vitamins. Okay, that's so, excellent. Yeah. Okay. Now, so basically, we just let this warm? Yeah, we just let it warm. Um, you can let it sit there for another 10 minutes, adding some more liquid if, as needed. Just like if you were making beef tacos yeah, at home. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. If you usually at this point add like diced tomatoes, you could do that. Oh, that would be nice Yeah, too. yeah, definitely. If you like, um, sometimes diced mushrooms that would be really good mm. cooked down into this as well, extra meatiness. Um, but you know, as far as taco filling goes, we're looking, we're looking pretty good. Okay. <laughs> um, so what I want to do is get out our beautiful lettuce leaves. Oh, my romaine. Nice. Yes. So not the bib lettuce uh, today. I just got the romaine and the big, big ones on the outside. And do you wash those before you use them? Yes. Okay. Did yes. you already pre-wash these? Not this one. Nope. Okay. We're going to the sink. <laughs> okay. Because I know last time you taught me I didn't have to wash the inside of the peppers. Right. Which was so much easier. Yeah. I did that little trick and that was good, great. Good, good. Yeah. Yeah. So with the lettuce, when it comes in, um, yeah, that's kind of why I kept it like this to show everybody. When it comes in the, this form, it's the cheapest best way to get crunchy salad. Mm. And so I really like to buy it on a regular basis. But when you pull those leaves off in here, so we some there's some, yeah, right? there's some, some dust, uh, not dust, some dirt, dirt, you know, things like that. So I always rinse off the romaine lettuce. No big deal. Okay. And you can see it makes a little happy natural cup. Beautiful. Yeah. I know. So what we'll do now is just kind of take off the heat. How'd I do, Chef? Yeah, did great. Okay, great. Good. It's got all I'm the good, good browning. Stirrer. Yeah, <laughs> great stirrer. It's perfect. And so just to serve it up, you put it in your little lettuce wrap here. It smells really good. Oh, it smells really good. <laughs> when we first talked about this recipe, here. we got really excited. Yeah. <laughs> We're like, oh, let's make lettuce wraps. That's great. All right, so I've got a lot of filling I can use for making it with the lettuce wrap or. 
Oh yeah, you did say. Look you what I found else. at the store. This is the first time I ever found these. Okay. Drum roll. They're tiny little They're tortillas. They're tiny little tortillas. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so if you want to do it, they call them street tacos. Okay, cute. Little corn street tacos. So if you're looking, you know, to add, you know, more whole grains in your diet, um, and you're looking for something to round out this meal a little bit more, right. you can use the tortillas. If you still want to just do with the lettuce, you can just do with the lettuce. Okay. So there's a, you know, a couple the ways it can like go. kids might like those. Yes. They'd probably really think they were cute. You might yeah. get your kids to eat this. So, you know, kind of like with the typical taco, you want to cover, you want to cover it. You want to <laughs> give <laughs> cover it. Cover it. You're right. Smother it. <laughs> <laughs> cover it in love. I got some fresh salsa here. Oh, nice. Again, I got it uh, instead of the jar because the jar tends to have a bit more sodium. That's good to know. And if the price is pretty similar, then it's worth it to kind of just get the fresh stuff. Absolutely. Um, and it just tastes so, that's it where you, taste so it tastes better. better. And then you do get more vitamins as well. Mm, yes. Okay. Because they haven't been um, pasteurized or it hasn't been cooked to the point of all the you know nutrients coming <laughs> right. out. So I've got salsa. Looks beautiful. I got some uh, um, diced onion over there if you want to put it on okay. top. I'm going to let you, do you have another spoon over there? Or? Well, I'll grab my glove. All right. And that's just lettuce? Yeah, that's okay. the, um, so I used the, the dark leafy parts for most of the lettuce cups. But when there was all this extra end, oh, yeah. I shredded it up and I put it on there so that I could Good use it. Good way to use everything. You want to use the whole thing, yeah. Okay. Um, so then you can use it to top everything off. <laughs> More lettuce on lettuce. But if it was to be a um, bib lettuce, then it would be a little bit different. So we got this, we got that, and then. Oh, we're really going we're all really out. We're really going all out. We're, yeah, Lime. that's going to add, yeah. Yep. It makes a big difference. It, it brings so much acidity, like right. much needed acidity. Kind of wakes the food up a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. And especially on top of a cool, crisp lettuce, when you have something that's really sour and tart mm. and warm. And that's why I like this combination nice. of things. We have warm, filling, cold, sour. You get all the senses. Right. They all come together in one. That's awesome. End up being oh, pretty good. Olives. Yeah, I got a couple I love of olives. sliced olives here. And I bought. Yeah. So those are beautiful lettuce wraps here. That is beautiful, Alyssa. <sighs> you know, for lunch, if you got some people coming over, it'd be nice to throw together. But even if you don't. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a great lunch. I love it. So I know I'm asking you off the top of your head. It's how perfect. much protein do you think is in there? Well, for a st typical serving of lentils, it's usually about seven grams of protein. Okay. Um, for walnuts, would be about f five. Um, so we're kind of looking yeah. around that ballpark, 10, 11, 12. Okay, um, nice. Yeah. So, I mean, if we look just on the container here for reference, they say one serving, and that they say one serving is a quarter cup dry, okay. has 12 grams of protein. I was wrong. <laughs> You're never wrong. I was wrong. That is wrong. It's 12. It's 12, <laughs> not 7. So it's even That's awesome. it's, it's more than I thought. That's awesome. Yeah. So 12 plus the walnuts. Yeah, 12 plus the yeah. walnuts. The walnuts will give us extra 5. Nice. On the higher side as well. So That's we got great. that good combo here. We've got all the different amino acids to help you build proteins. Um, so as far as satiating goes, your plant eaters and your meat eaters alike. Right. We're going to do a good job with that. Like that. Yeah. So anything else you'd want to share with the audience on, you know, helping to transition and get more of these plant-based recipes? Yes. Yeah. So for lunch, I mean, when you're trying to think about what to make, um, especially when trying to start to implement new recipes, always start with things that you already are familiar with making. That's kind of why I did the, mm, the chickpea salad. That's kind of why I did the, the taco things, um, because those are things that I can typically throw together right. for lunch. Nothing more popular than sandwiches, True. of course. So just finding ways to say, all right, I'm going to take my typical um, white bread, um, you know, ham and cheese with lettuce and tomato and just bump it up to even a, a whole grain bread yes. with lettuce and tomato 
And if you, you know, if you're still easing into it, slice of nice sharp cheese, so then you got a nice vegetarian sandwich there. Then next step nice. is just to take that guy out. And what I would use in place of it is hummus, as always. <laughs> of course. We're going to use hummus for everything. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Or veggie burgers. Sometimes there's some right. good ones out there. Um, you just got to look at the food labels because sometimes the veggie oh, burgers are really truth. oily, especially now they're trying to pretend that they're beef. So right. they're getting real greasy. So um, you have to be careful in what you're buying. Always. Even if it says plant-based on it, big bright letters. Read those Read ingredients. those ingredients. Yep, yep, yep. If you can't pronounce them, that's a good um, method to say you probably shouldn't want to put it in your body. Right. All right. Well, terrific. Yes. Well, thank you. You're thank welcome. you for letting us in your kitchen again. Oh, but I got to show you one more thing. Okay. What is it? My chickpea salad. Oh, right. <laughs> I almost forgot. <laughs> so we have the one. Oh, look how nice. Oh. The magic. Let me go get the rest. Okay, and she really did mash hers. <laughs> right, I have the ones from, from my mashing. And then we have the one that we even just threw together now. You know, it's been sitting there, what, 20 minutes? Yeah. Not, not bad. So um, I like to just grab a little. And what is that in there? Uh, flat parsley? Yes. So I just wanted to make it pretty, and I had okay. some parsley around. Um, it's one thing I'm going to add into the tuna chickpea salad last okay. is just some oh, lemon juice, too. I always love that. Can't forget Anything the lemon juice. Anything citrus, right? <laughs> yeah, citrus in both. The lime, the right. lemon, vitamin C, we need it, you know? Yeah. There's actually, we're getting less vitamin C as a, though I saw this research study recently that we're getting less vitamin C as, as wow. a country, yeah, over time. I wonder why that is. Did they... Have any documentation or? Well, it was sponsored by Pepsi, so, so they were selling juice. Okay. Yeah, but it was still a fun fact. It's right. still it's still not right. it's still not a lie. It's just the way that they put it. So. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, <laughs> I listened to it with a grain of salt. All right, so I got my beautiful oh my dish gosh. there. Looks fabulous. And then, almost like I would if I was at a lunch or brunch place, just with some lettuce there. I already put the pickles in, and I have flat leaf parsley, which really goes along with it very well as well. Looks beautiful, Alyssa. Right? That's why we really love those initials, the, <laughs> the C-H-E-F. <laughs> Thank you. She makes it delicious and achievable and easy. Um, so happy to always do a program with you. Yes. Any last minute tips? Well, we need to try it. Okay, you're gonna let me try it on <laughs> yes. camera? Yeah. All right, with pickles in it? <laughs> Oh, no. No, I'll do no, it. No, no, I have one without pickles. No, I'm going to be brave and try the with pickles. Okay. All right, drum roll. All right, boom. We're going to just do drums. grab our lettuce. Okay. I'll go rinse it off. Just take them like a champ. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm always willing to try what you make. So, some on yours. I'll put it in the little cup part. Thank you. Just a little bit. Just so you can see. Oh, <laughs> so just a little just bit a little as bit. I put in like a half a <laughs> cup. Just enough to taste it because we need to see if we need to add salt or anything, okay. right? <laughs> I actually like it with the pickles. And I actually it like it with something. And I like it with these more whole. <laughs> See, we make a good team. Yeah, yeah. This is really good. Excellent. Well, we learn something new every day. Yeah. So maybe the whole beans, not mashed. Yeah. And or a little I half, like the little pickle half and in half. it. Mm -hmm. Makes it so much more interesting. Deli style. You know, you get that real I like that. flavor. Okay, yeah. Okay, I'm going to eat the rest of this when we're off camera. Because right. we have to try this guy. Okay. And now this is going to be the one that I think is a, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's harder to convince um, other, you know, folks who might not be really into plant-based eating, like, oh, this is good, because they're going to think it's going to, we're trying to substitute, substitute beef, but we're not. No. We're just making lentils and walnuts instead. Right. So we're not okay. trying to, it's not supposed to taste like beef. It's supposed to just taste like its own wonderful, wonderful deliciousness. Yes. 
So I'm gonna put some in here, and some in there. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. And then, cheers. Cheers. Mm. The, the mellow, mm -hmm. the roasted nuts in there. Mm -hmm. Love it with the walnuts. Yeah, yeah, right? Mm -hmm. It adds so much more of a consistency because mm -hmm. I've done lentil tacos a million times. But adding the roasted nuts has really added not only protein but deliciousness. So It's totally delicious. Yeah. Knocked it out of the park again. Always so happy to be here with you. Happy lunch Thanks time. for making us another step closer to our healthier selves. One day at a time, one meal at a time. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. All right. I hope we're make, breaking it down and making it easy for you. Thank you for joining us. And next time we'll be doing dinner. See you then. Make it a great day. Bye.